Hey guys, Grifton here, and today we're going to be talking about Swift Flight Form Quest Chain. If you've never done this before, uh, don't worry, it's uh, not too bad. It's about two and a half hours, three hours maybe, uh, through the whole thing, and we're going to knock it out in one quick video so you have a full understanding of everything. I'm going to be going over all the things you have to do, all the things you need, all the fights that you will be encountering. Yes, you'll be having to do some fighting. Um, if you're a healer trying to do this, I recommend bringing someone along for the second half because... A lot of the ender, the harder parts, uh, it helps to have a second person. And once you watch the video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, so go ahead and you're going to teleport Moonglade over to Moonglade. And you're going to talk to the trainer that is sitting across the way. He'll be able to pick up the quest for you. Uh, and that's where you'll begin. Now, uh, some prerequisites. Level 70, you need to have um, 300 flying. Uh, you need to be revered with lower city. You need to have 10 ancient lichen, 10 dreaming glory. They're going to be used for a quest very early on, so go ahead and grab them now before you even start. Pick them up at the auction house, farm them, whatever you do. But once you get to this guy, this is where the quest starts. If you don't see this, you're either not level 70 or you don't have 300 flying. Uh, pick it up. It's pretty much just going to tell you to go to uh, Morthis in Wis uh, sorry in Zangermarsh, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to Hearth there. If you have a Warlock to help you, it'll make a lot of this a lot easier because you are going to be going back and forth between a couple places. Uh, mainly this one, you're going to become a Mech to Moonglade. So when you get to Scenarian Expedition in Zangermarsh, you're going to talk to this guy setting by the Moonwell. Um, he's pretty much just going to say, yep, you're, you could be my apprentice, and he's going to give you a follow-up quest, which is going to require 10 Ancient Lycan, 10 uh, Dreaming Glory, and 10, I think it's called Bog Blossom, which you're going to find on the top of the Mushrooms in Zangermarsh. So if you have quests, you'll put them on the mark for you. Uh, pretty much just fly up to the top of Mushrooms. You just click them just like a, any other quest item no big deal there is one hiccup i'm going to go over really quick i'm gonna to try to speed through these so i don't you don't have to watch all of them but there is one exception to that normal uh, scenario uh, one of the things you will have to do is you will have to um, watch out for a kickback so i'm going to fast forward to an example of it happening to me essentially all you have to do is turn in, uh hop into swift flight form and you're fine uh, i think it's this one is it the next one yeah it's the next one all right, so right here, um, so pretty much just be prepared to press your swift flight form button uh, in case you're not, you probably, you might fall off. I think I would have landed on this other mushroom, but uh, either way, so go back to swift flight form and you're fine, no big deal. Uh, just keep an eye out for that. Essentially, just collect your 10, uh, your 10 bog blossom and you're done. So now all you have to do is re uh, return, assuming you already got your ancient lichen and your dreaming glory, and that first quest is pretty much done. That's it. Now he's gonna make a little concoction, so he's gonna stand there and like uh, kind of mess around with the water to make it for you. So you have to wait for him to finish that. So don't leave yet because there is a follow-up quest. And you go ahead, and he's pretty much gonna tell you go back to Moonglade um, to give it to a guy in a den. So when you do take the teleport back to Moonglade, just make sure that you go to your right instead of your left. Most people, when you go to Moonglade, you automatically go left. Just go right; it's faster that way. If you end up going left, whatever, but. I actually did it out of habit. I go this way, and then I remember, oh, yeah, I'm going back this way. Um, just hug the lake, and then you're going to come up to three dens. You need to go to the southernmost one. I'll show you on the map right here. See, right there, that one. And just go inside. Um, pretty much, you're going to go straight down and then cross the bridge. There is a guy you're going to pass that you'll be coming back to. I go ahead and mark him with the star, just so you have an idea that uh, where, he, where you're going to end up after the quest is over, because you will come back here. Uh, if you're a healer, you can handle this solo, I think. Um, there's not a lot of damage. Uh, there is like a kind of boss at the end of this, but he's not very hard. I think he's got 14,000 health. And you'll get to see, um, I, in cat form, it was a joke. Uh, I went in bear form for a second. You'll see. Anyway, talk to this dude. Uh, he's pretty much just going to wake up and then walk over to the right. We'll try to fast forward through as much as this is possible. Um, but I do want you to see everything, especially in these caves. You don't want to, uh, if you get lost or something, I don't know how, but... Uh, at least you have a visual of it. So the next quest is he's actually going to split himself into two souls or whatever, split his soul, and he's going to create a ghost, and you follow the ghost around. And he pretty much is just going to click these things, and you're going to protect him. It's pretty easy. It takes about five minutes in total. Maybe not even that. Uh, there he is. I'm marking with the moon so you can see him. And the first one's to the left. And you're just going to kill those two adds. He'll run in and click this little rock thing. There's two more to the south, or down, I guess is the better way to say that. And on the third one, that's where the boss comes in. There's a big giant bird. Um, I didn't see him coming right away, but I knew he was going to be there. I thought he'd be hard. He's not 14,000 health again. 
Um, I actually go into the cave and look and realize he spawned right outside. You can see him right there. Um, so I just run back out and kill him really quick. Uh, I'm going to show you just like the amount of damage so you can see. I'm really not taking much. 100 damage here and there from each of them. Um, the only thing is he has a big health pool. I just keep him off the, the, the moon guy and you'll be fine. And then I just went back to cat. I'm just going to fast forward through this. You know how these guys work. Just kill them. All right, and then we're going to go and do the last one. And then he's just going to walk back up to the guy I marked with the star. So let's just fast forward through all this. Let's just go back up, pretty much. And, okay, so now he's going to send you back to Zangermarsh. Now, um, if you're following this, I just blew my Hearthstone getting over to Zangermarsh the first time. So I had to fly. If you've got a Warlock or someone that can get you back there, definitely do that. Um, or maybe if you've got someone that can meet you in Darnassus to, um, to port you over, that works. I ended up taking um, Moonglade down to Ratchet, over to Booty Bay, over to Netherguard Keep, and then just shot down through the portal. Wasn't that bad. Uh, but once you get here, turn in. No big deal. Uh, the next quest, I believe, is going to send you to uh, um, Blade's Edge. and call it, It's called Evergrove. Yep, Evergrove. You're going to talk to this researcher there. So let's just jump to Evergrove. Boom. Um, she's over by the building on my right here. Yep, straight ahead. And you're going to come back here a lot, so get familiar with this place. Um, so her quests are pretty straightforward. Uh, she, she might just send you and do stuff. This, the first one she's going to send you to is actually in, uh, near Ogrela. If you don't know where that's at, it's in the west side of Blade's Edge. I will be showing it on the map so you'll be able to see. Um, but you pretty much just need to fly out there and kill an Aether Ray to get an eye. And then you, she gave you a, uh, a Seer Stone. Click on that and you're going to be able to see priests that are invisible. So right now I'm going to ever go flying over to Ogrela and now I'm in Ogrela. Uh, it's all the way to the, the west. Okay, so there's ether rays right here. They're yellow, so you have to attack them to fight them. Um, I got it on the first one. I don't know if this is 100% drop rate, but it's got to be pretty high if I got that lucky. Pretty much just kill this guy, and you you should already have a seer stone in your bag, and you just combine it. It's for, good for five minutes. You shouldn't need the full five minutes, um, especially if you just go where I did. So I couldn't find him. The Matt, Questy said it was over here. He ended up not being over here. There was another priest here, but it, it's a it's a specific name, um, and I'll get to him, and you can look up his name if you want. I think it's like S H A Sha or S A I or something like that. Um, I end up talking to the priest, and he says he's to the east. So I ended up heading over there to look, and that's when I found him. Don't be dizzied. It's in it's fast, but I'm actually just to the east of Overlaw right now, and he's right behind me. Yep. And his name is, uh, yeah, S-A-I. So if you do a slash tar S-A-I, you'll probably find him faster than just running around like I did. Um, but yeah, pretty much just click the, the chat bubbles and he's going to turn you into an Arakoa. Uh, you can, once you finish the quest, which I've already done, you can just drop the Arakoa buff. Uh, it's a buff, so just remove it. You won't be able to fly if you're confused, like why you can't mount up. It's because you are technically shapeshifted. Just remove the debuff and you'll, or the buff, sorry, and you'll be fine. And it takes me forever. I wanted to show you guys how long it took me to figure out what was going on. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we're going to go back to Evergrove. So let's just jump over to Evergrove. And then this is where the fun starts. So uh, next thing up is going to be headed to Nagrand. You're going to talk to this uh, woman in the mid on all the way to the west of Nagrand. Uh, she's up on a perch. When you get this quest, as long as you have quest, it'll show you a question mark. But she's pretty much way over to the west, um, just past Forge Camp 8. And you're just going to turn the quest in, and she's going to give you a follow-up quest, which makes you do uh, net one of these birds that are right behind you. So let's go ahead and catch up. Use the net. This is actually tricky. If you've never done this before, um, the birds will run away from you. <laughs> so you have to have some sort of strategy. There's two ways I've read to do this. I did this with a hibernate. Um, you can just hibernate them when you get close and they won't run. Um, it took me a while to get the hibernate down. I ended up uh, trying, or sorry, I, it ended up working, but um, I read online that you could just go into stealth, walk right up to them, and net them. I did not try it because you only get one shot at this, really. Um, I guess I could have dropped the quest over and over again, but um, yeah. So try feral uh, stealth into a net. That might work a lot easier. This took me a while. Here's the one I actually worked. 
quick hibernate and just walked up to him and netted him. No big deal. Um, yeah, that is, that's probably uh, not the hardest quest because there are harder ones, but like probably the most confusing one for me. I, I just had no idea what I was doing. Um, okay, uh, but this one you're going to actually go out to Skedis. If you don't know where Skedis is, it's south uh, east of Shatrath. So if you've ever fished before, um, right behind the Alliance place, there's water. You just keep going higher and higher um, until you get to Skedis. Usually there's no mobs there, but in Phase 2 there will be mobs, so just be a little careful. They don't hit very hard, so just kill them if, you, if they get in the way. But what you're going to do is you're going to use a whistle, an owl, or whatever the sparrowhawk is going to drop down. And he's going to tell you to dig. Um, and you're pretty much just going to rinse repeat. Uh, you need to move around though. I kept trying it in like the same general area and he couldn't find anything. I went, ended up moving around more and it worked out. So you see he keeps failing twice. So I went over here and did it again and it worked just fine. Um, you just kind of have to move around and look for these things. They'll just, I mean, you can't see them, so he'll find them for you. Uh, but that's this whole thing. So then you go all the way back to Evergrove. Don't go back to Nagrand. It was a one-time place. Um, go back to Evergrove and turn in the quest. And this is where the hard quests come. So you're going to turn this in and she's going to read the tablet. It's going to show up on the ground next to her when you click complete quest. So she's going to read it and pretty much say that you need to fight these three dudes. Um, now the way this works is there is a, of the three of them, there is essentially supposed to be like one where you're in bear form, one where you're in cat form, and one where you're in balance form or caster form. Um, the third one is going to be the hardest, especially if you're feral. Uh, balance, you're going to have a very easy time with the third one. You'll probably have an easy time with all three if you're balance, um, just because you can output so much damage. So um, this is right, this is in, see it right here, it's right next to the uh, the Horde's, uh, Horde's base. So you got to be careful coming in, you want to come in from the east to the west, um, so you don't accidentally get PvP tagged. Um, so pretty much, I was I didn't know how hard he was going to hit, so I um, started with Cat and then was planning on switching to Bear when the ads came. But once I realized what a joke he was, I just went full Cat and burned him down. Um, the ads will despawn once he's dead, so don't stress about him. I'll let you watch. It's pretty uh, pretty fast fight. Yeah, see, I panicked and went into bear form, and then I realized he was dying so fast, it just made sense to burn him. Yeah, and I took almost no damage. I mean, I am in uh, pretty good gear, so. Okay, so now, uh, you're supposed to just blow the whistle when you're finished. I forgot, so I, I flew away and then realized, you, you know, just blow the whistle. So I blew it in Terracor Forest, that's the only place you can do it, and the, the Sparrowhawk will come down and give you the follow-up quest. So... If you're doing these in order, just blow the whistle as soon as you kill the boss. I ran away because I wasn't paying attention. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to go to just... Uh, so if you know where Skedis is, you're going to head down the water. Um, so this is uh, we're coming from Skedis right now, and this is down the little river area. And there's a little lake. If you look, you can see the blue roofs of the Alliance base. That's how close it is. And it's in uh, a little lake right here called uh, Irinoru. Didn't even know this place existed. Uh, but there's a statue right here, and this is supposed to be the cat one. He puts a debuff on you, so if you are a healer, you might want to have uh, someone help you just to pump a little bit harder. Uh, I don't know what the debuff does. I honestly killed him so fast, so I was like, this, I don't really care. Um, but I'm assuming it lowers the damage you take based on the amount of damage I was doing to him. Um, so you've got to hurry up and kill him, or you'll not be able to do any damage to him. So if you're a healer or someone that can't pump hard with damage, you might want to bring someone along just to make this a little bit easier. And stealthing doesn't always work. <laughs> and yeah, I'll try to fast forward to this. But if you look at the damage I'm doing to him, you know, it's slowly decreasing. 600 is pretty low for me. Um, 541, 723. Actually, that wasn't that bad. Uh, but I think that's what the debuff does. It lowers the amount of damage you do. Uh, so you need to hurry up and kill him or else... Uh, you won't be able to do any damage, then you'll die. Uh, but you can see how fast it was. And then, again, just blow the whistle. <laughs> Don't fly away, uh, like I did. So this time I remembered, blew, blew the whistle. And, yeah, I'm going to speed this up really quick. So now the third one is on a floating island just south of um, Akendon, I think is how you say it. Um, so, but this one you get the you get the uh, the the enchant already, or sorry, the um, uh, 
the oh my god the trinket um so okay so now we're at the last we're at the last of the hard ones so this was actually really hard i read online you can go bear form and just burn them down i was not able to do that so if you try it and you do it in bear form successfully please let me know because i ended up doing what a lot of people suggested which was entangling roots and then starfire and then constantly removing uh your curse and your poison so there's two things he does he does a curse and he does a poison the poison stacks and it, it removes your mana so if you are going to do some caster form you need to get rid of that poison asap because it will put you oom very fast um make sure you clear out the flamingos that are around here uh, because you will be kind of kiting them around uh, so just go ahead and do that and when you pull just like I said, entangling roots, starfire, entangling roots, starfire. Watch your health, watch your mana. It's pretty easy. Uh, I'm not. I don't play caster very often, so this was very awkward for me because I don't have anything properly bound. Uh, but you can watch me fail. I'm only gonna show the first part so you get an idea of how this works. So um, every time um, he throws curse of blood, you just decurse it, and then every time he does a throw, that's the poison. So you're just gonna go ahead and. Uh, Abolish poison on it. That's pretty much the whole fight. I'm going to keep showing it just so you get an idea of uh, how bad I am at <laughs> Balanced Druid. Alright, let's just speed through this. I This took me three, three attempts, I want to point out. I did die on this. This is the hardest part of this whole thing for me. Um, so don't feel bad if you can't one-shot this. When you when you die, you just spawn uh, over at Akandan. You don't have to try to figure out a way to get to this island, so don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, once he's dead, this is not one of those times where you build a whistle now. You actually need to go all the way back to uh, Blade's Edge to Evergrove. So go ahead and mount up, head all the way back, and ta-da, you arrive. The magic of editing. Okay, so turn this in. There's a couple more pieces, but you do get the charm, which is great, kind of. I mean, you don't have Swift Flight form yet, so it's kind of a garbage charm. But, um, yeah, but now you're going to go back to um, Scenario Expedition, to the Moonwell. So let's just cut to that, and you're going to turn this in. He's going to give you a uh, another, it's kind of like another Druid-specific thing. Um, you're going to be going out to Ashara in uh, original content, if you don't remember Ashara. Um, it's the fastest way to take... Uh, Take your teleport Moonglade and head south to Ashar. Um, if you're Horde, it's pretty easy. It's right north of, uh, oh, uh, oh my god, Orgrimmar? Orgrimmar. And you're going to go up the bank. I'll show you the whole thing. Okay, so this is me landing in Ashara. Now I'm going to show on my map the rough idea where it is. It's actually north of where I, I kind of show on the map right here. It's actually up in the mountain area. So just mount up and head up there. I'll fast forward through all this too. Don't worry, when you see it, you'll know it. I was looking forever. I was trying to think what it would look like. I thought it was maybe a statue. No, but it looks like this. So this is a tricky one. Um, so when you click the moonstone, uh, a goblin's going to pop up and she's going to stun you. You can free action potion through this if you want. So like the cheesy way to do this is to pop a free action potion and then as soon as she tries to stun you, mount up and jump into the river past the boat. And when she jumps in, she'll run right into you and the quest will be over. Um, I did not understand that. I thought I'd just go up to her, and I was like, cool, I'm done. Um, but you do. So I end up doing it like the quote-unquote correct way. So she's going to jump in the river, and you have to chase her. Um, she's going to drop bombs and then do freezes on you. So you just need to avoid the bombs, which I am very bad at at first. Uh, but pretty much I found that if you hug the right wall, you can just skip all the bombs, and you're fine. But, yeah, let's um, let's fast-forward through this very bad example of me doing this. I hope I hit the fast forward button soon. Uh, but it's actually a fun, this is actually a fun quest. So if you you don't feel like cheesing it, it's not bad. It's kind of fun. There we go. Um, you don't have to kill her. You just have to walk up to her, pretty much like reach her, and she'll stop and give you the moonstone, and then the quest is over. But you have to go back to Zangermarsh, and luckily my Hearthstone's back up, so that's not a problem. But if your Hearthstone is on cooldown, you need to find a way to get back to Zangermarsh. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and jump back over to right here. Okay, so all the quests are done. All the big stuff is over. Now we have to the, get to the final one, which is the hardest. Trust me, this took me, just to find a group in PTR took me like days. Uh, so you have to go into Heroic Sethic Halls 
to get your swift flight form, and you have to fight Anzu. Honestly, Anzu's not that bad. Um, the first boss in Southern Calls is just the worst. Uh, my friend was kind of describing it to me this way. The better you your gear gets, the harder that boss becomes because you kill him so fast that the ads spawn so rapidly. So just get to set the calls heroic. You need to get five people uh, and yeah, just head in. And you don't have to do the whole instance, but you have to do the majority of the instance. You can skip the last boss. Um, so it took me a minute to get the uh, the, the 10 people. So let's uh, just jump to it. Okay, so, or sorry, the five people. Okay, so um, pretty much the strategy is it's a two phase fight. Phase one, it's just a tank and spank. He will put like random, uh, I think it's called spell bomb on people. Pretty much they can't cast. Uh, it's not a lot of damage, so it's not that big of a deal. So the healer just has to stand there, or the caster just has to stand there. Um, not a big deal, though. Uh, honestly, we had no problems with him. And then phase two, he's going to banish himself. And then during that time, uh, birds are going to come down. Now, there are also three birds helping you. Uh, you need to tell your healer to keep, I think, the raven and the eagle are the two important ones. You're going to see them on kind of my left and my right, and then I think behind me. But yeah, he's pretty much... See how they just popped up, the, the birds? Uh, you pretty much just want to keep them alive. You don't really need to worry about them if you don't want to, but they help with the AoE. Um, yeah, and then just AoE the birds down as fast as you can, and then go back to them. That is the whole fight. It's very easy. Um, don't stress about trying to get a, like the perfect raid comp, or, I mean, uh, whatever comp. We had a rogue uh, enhancement shaman and a hunter who had never played a hunter before. He was just on the PTR having fun. Uh, but that's the whole fight. And there you go. And now all you have to do is go back to Zanger Marsh to Scenarian Expedition and turn it in. This is a big moment. It took me a couple days to finish this, uh, just trying to get people. And there you go, Swift Flight Form. Now, if you're dumb like me, oh, if you ever want to go back and do um, Anzu again for the, the, the mount, you have to do this quest. It'll give you an item. The item is actually in your key inventory, not in your regular inventory. Uh, so if you're looking for it, that's where it's at. Uh, but essentially, you're done. Now, if you use any keybinds, or sorry, macros that involve Swift Flight, or sorry, Flight Form, you need to modify it and use Swift Flight Form. There you go. And then you can turn into a, a cool-looking bird. This thing's huge, too. And it looks awesome. And you're done. Obviously, equip the trinket while you're in flight. You can do um, item rack to do that automatically for you. And congratulations, you now have Swift Flight Form. I hope this video was helpful. Please, if you enjoyed this, subscribe. It really helps me out. And as always, take care, guys.